Everybody thought that it wasn't going to be a war, that the Argentinians had invaded uh, a British sovereign island and that they would back down. Once we actually got south of Ascension Island, did we only realise then that we were going to war and that some of us might not come back. Well, all British diplomats at the United Nations are saying there is an imminent danger of the Falkland Islands being invaded by Argentina. Uh, hello, this is the Governor speaking. Uh, those of you who are living in Stanley will have heard some confused shooting. Um, we've just had a message from His Excellency the Governor. Uh, government House is now surrounded. Mr. Speaker, sir, for the first time for many years, British sovereign territory has been invaded by a foreign power. On the 19th of March, 1982, 8,000 miles away in the South Atlantic Ocean, scrap metal workers illegally arrive in South Georgia, raising the Argentine flag. An action that would lead to a brief but bitter conflict on the Falkland Islands. On the 2nd of April, 1982, the Argentine invasion begins. The United Kingdom rapidly assembles an amphibious task force to retake the Falkland Islands resulting in one of the largest military operations since World War II. I was, I was doing a job with all the other guys that were on the squadrons and, and the, on the ground. And to achieve that job, you sometimes have to do things that, that aren't nice and that might affect you in a bad way. You get a sense of achievement when you lift 20 guys out of a dinghy when the ship is sinking, or you go and rescue eight soldiers, Royal Marines, paras, who've had shrapnel wounds and might die. So you feel a sense of achievement then but I wouldn't say I was ever proud of it. Looking back 14 years or more, I am different now, a different person, but I'm also the same. I can close my eyes and be there, smelling the smells, hearing the sounds, feeling the feelings. The memories are clear and sharp, no sign of fading. The loss still hurts, causing a tightness in my chest and a stinging in my eyes. The pain is still there, just under the surface. Perhaps it always will be. On the 1st of May, Vulcan bombers, sea harriers and naval guns begin bombardments on Argentine defences. The following day, HMS Conqueror sinks Argentine cruiser General Belgrano, securing naval superiority in the region. British and Argentine forces then begin a fierce battle for air superiority over the islands. A transmission came over that four A4 Skyhawks were making their way from Mount Kent to Tier Inlet, just where we were going. Now we trained fighter evasion and you've got to get the timing perfectly right. If you don't get it right, they'll shoot you down. I looked out of the back left-hand window and saw four of these aircraft bearing down on us. Waited a few seconds and said to the boss, break left. He instantly did. We'd heard the sound of the cannon shells and the sound of the cannons firing from the A4s but we didn't realise we'd been hit. The boss then inspected the aircraft and we'd seen we'd taken a 20 mil cannon shell through the main spar of one of the blades. If the blade had broken, there's no way we would have survived it. The aircraft would have crashed. On the 21st of May, Royal Marines and elements of the Parachute Regiment land at San Carlos Bay 
yomping 56 miles over three days to recapture Stanley. The bold plan epitomised the capability of Royal Marines to land from the sea, insert over long distances and catch the enemy off guard. HMS Coventry is paired with HMS Broadsword to act as a decoy in order to draw Argentinian aircraft away from San Carlos Bay. After shooting down two A4 Skyhawks, the pair came under attack once again. You can hear the missile from inside the ship. Follow its progress as it approaches. The tension and fear building. The faces staring through the bulkhead, through the steel skin, watching with their ears. The relief, the joy, the sheer ecstasy as we watch its pass overhead. Another faulty one. Later, as action stations stand down, we find out another ship wasn't so lucky. The missile that missed us hit somewhere else. Friends on another ship didn't have our luck. They're dead. We heard over the radio that HMS Coventry had been bombed. And when we saw HMS Coventry, uh, it was a sight that you don't really want to see. It's been hit, the ding is all around it, and it's halfway to rolling over. So we went round and looked at all the once only suits to look for survivors who might need our help more than the ones in the dinghies. We found one guy. Unfortunately, when we got him up, he was dead. We tried to revive him, uh, but we couldn't. So I grabbed this guy, put him in the jump seat just behind the pilot, and strapped him in. We then went back to the dinghies and started winching survivors up. I'd never seen anything like that before. So for me, having been to sea quite a lot, you look at it and think, yeah, this is, this is what war is about. People try to kill you, and sometimes they succeed. One of the four Royal Navy ships sunk in the conflict, HMS Coventry was struck by three bombs and within 20 minutes had completely capsized. I went back to the Falklands five or six years ago, and uh, we went up to the monument they've got for Coventry, and it really brought it back. From the 11th of June, several crucial land-based assaults were carried out, securing strategic positions on the island. Talks are now in progress about the surrender of the Argentine forces on east and west. On June 14th, after suffering significant losses, Argentinian forces had no option but to surrender. There is a photograph. Me, my wife, and my two children. And I look at it now that I'm home safe. They're glad that I've come home. But that's when I really think about the people we lost. Great for our family, but not for the people who didn't come back. I didn't want anyone there. I just wanted to go home and forget and get on with my life. I did nothing special, nothing to be proud of. I can understand your joy and relief, but for me, there was neither. I saw the crowd, or was it audience, and was overwhelmed, intimidated. I wanted to stay down the mess, watching you on the television, waiting for you all to go away. So I could go home, alone, on my own, and settle in my chair, reacquaint myself with my home and surroundings, reacquaint myself with myself. 